Today, you did a very quick uh, lab on mirrors. So if we've got a mirror, so here we go. There we are. If you've got a mirror here, we always um, very much like what we did with forces. We define one of these to be a normal line. Normal, again, being the math term or uh, perpendicular. Now, if you've got a ray of light coming in, oh, I should back up and, and talk about rays of light. Um, light, of course, is it's complex, more complex than we're used to thinking about. Uh, when it comes down to it, everything is going to be complex like this, but light is especially obvious. It's got properties of both uh, waves, normally, and particles under some circumstances. Now, actually everything does. We just usually, like we do, um, we are obviously particle, but we have properties of waves. It's just the fact that that wave is so tiny that it's very, very hard to observe. We can observe things like that when we start talking about protons or electrons, that sort of thing, single atoms um, that are going quite quickly, but for something as massive as us, the wave is so small that it's very, very, very tough to see. Light is quite a bit easier. We're going to deal with light in its wave form, but we're going to make another simplification on that and just say that if um, we have a source of light here, let's say it's a little light bulb, of course light waves are those perfectly concentric circles, uh, they're emitted, and at any point are away, it's going to have the same sort of power. So consider this like the sun. Doesn't matter where we are, it's essentially going to be the same amount of light intensity anywhere. But if we are way out here on Earth, those waves hitting us are in such a big circle that the little part that we see looks practically flat across it, up and down here. Um, these are called plane waves, plane as in a plane, a geometric plane, rather than just ordinary. Um, and they just seemingly, for our little speck that we see them, go off in a straight line. The direction perpendicular to that, so for us, this away that it's traveling, perpendicular to that nearly flat wave front is called a ray. And that's what we'll use for most of our work. That's what you used in this lab, are the rays. So let's take a ray and say that this ray, this ray is coming in at some angle. We'll call that angle theta i for incident angle. What's going to happen to it when it hits our mirror? It's going to reflect off of it. How? In what direction, I should say? Uh, in the angle of the incident angle. You know, the other side of the flip flop. Flip flop is a scientific term I would use. Flip flop. It's kind of, um, I can't think of it, but it's kind of reversed off the normal thing. Okay. okay. Across the normal. Yeah. Across the normal <laughs> at the same angle, right? Yeah, I, I knew you knew what you were saying, but. So there we have a reflected ray. That's not how you spell that. There we go. And uh, let's see if I can do this nicely. I want to flip it. No. I lost it. It's gone. <laughs> this is just comical. Yeah, you smart board. <laughs> Wait, wait, I can 
Okay, click on this. Now I can flip it, right? Okay, good. And now it's gone. Oh, there it is. Oh. Can't move it. Oh, it, it moved an inch. Oh! I can use my arrow keys. This is awesome. This is so engaging. Hey! Okay, so we're going to get, now I really, the next thing I'm going to do is just be, it's just going to be brutal. The next thing I'm going to try and do. So we saw that the uh, reflected ray is going to be exactly the same as the uh, incident ray, but on the other side of the normal ray. Um, now, this kind of mirror can't on its own form an image that we could project somewhere. Um, if you had some other things out here, and we'll say you, you were, had a beautiful uh, tapestry, you couldn't get this, that tapestry to appear somewhere else just with this one, uh, one mirror. We could certainly look into the mirror and use the lenses in our eyes to form an image, um, but this itself doesn't, doesn't actually project. Let's take a look and see, this is sort of the intro to ray tracing. Let's take a look and see how, what kind of things, what kind of images this does for us. So I'm gonna set up our axis again down here. Now very often when we're working with these, uh, the optical images and that sort of thing, we draw for ourselves a very simple uh, image, an object. I put it out here, that's a little too big. Um, let's see if I can say that. There you go. And, and for simplicity, we often draw that image as an arrow. Now, if we wanted to find out where would an image of this object form, if any, we're going to follow the rules that we just learned. So I'm going to draw some rays coming off of this. The first ray I'm going to do, and this would work for all of the rays all the way down, but very often we pick just the top we see where that's going, and then we assume the bottom's just going to be simple. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make it. So let's take one ray and draw it perpendicular. When this ray hits our mirror, what's going to happen to it? It's going to be reflected, but how? Straight back, Straight back just like just like it was here. So it's going to go that away, straight over it. So you end up there. What I'm going to do, though, is to say, um, while that is not terribly, no, I'm going to leave it for a second. Um, let's take another ray then, because that one that one doesn't teach us that much. Let's take let's take this blue ray, and I'm going to pull it down right here, because that'll be simple for us. Now that ray hits our mirror right along what I've defined as a normal. There, could be, there would be a normal line anywhere. How is it going to reflect? Um, question. Yeah. If a ray reflects straight off the mirror, like a, you know. At the same angle. Yeah. Is there a possibility that some of the particles could collide with each other, or is that not? What do you mean particles? The, the light? The light, yeah. Um, light. light doesn't interact with itself. So no. And in that, in that regard, um, we could have a discussion a little while later about what exactly is going on during reflection, because that's much more complicated than it seems. Um, and that involves some of your collisions between light and, and the atoms of the reflector. Uh, but I think we'll hold off on that for now. We actually saw, of course, what happened to this one up above. And, and I can probably not make it do what I want, but I'm going to try again anyway. Well, it's selected when you... Yay! Fun with math. It's just so dumb. If you hold it down, does it keep going or no? No. It doesn't. Oh, <laughs> it moves after I release it. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to go there. 
<laughs> now, and then let's do one final array. Do this one as and let's take one ray and do it up there. Assume that it's still going to hit within. How is that one going to reflect as it hits the mirror? Up. Up and to the left, right? Correct. And so duplicate that. Okay. Now here is why we never see an image for these. Because these three rays, the green, the purple, and the blue, they never meet. In order to have this form an image somewhere, these three rays, one, two, three, are going to have to meet somewhere in space. And then we have that's where we would have the image. These never meet in front of the mirror. But now if we put a lens and are looking at the same side as the object, what our, our lens does is it essentially um, extends these backwards. So, see if I can, if my geometry is good, and I extend these reflected rays backwards, I get one there, I get a green one this way, and I get a blue one, this way, and if I were a little bit more careful with my measurements, they would all meet right there. And so what that means is we've got an image that is formed behind it. Like so. This is called a virtual image. It's one that we can see because we have lenses in our eyes. Um, but it appears to be behind the mirror where there is no actual light from our object at all. We'll talk more about the distinction amongst, uh, amongst Im different types of images. But I, before we go, I want you to get the three rules that we're going to use whenever we're ray tracing with mirrors. So we're going to draw, we, very often we'll just draw two lines, of two of these lines. There are three that we would usually look at. Um, one is uh, parallel, or sorry, array perpendicular to the surface. and that reflects perpendicularly. Uh, pretty sure that's a word. And then we're going to draw two others. Doesn't even matter their angles as long as they're not perpendicular. Um, but for simplicity, I'm just going to say any ray striking at a different angle reflects at the same angle, but on the other side of the normal. And then step three is extend any two of the reflected rays backwards behind the mirror. Where they meet is where the image forms.
I'll sh I'll go back up after I get done writing this one. What I mean by that is, um, in my, my geometry wasn't quite perfect on my drawing up above, but if we took the light leaving the tip of our arrow and followed three of the rays that go off of it, they would not, they would diverge when they hit the mirror. So they would never come back together any place in real world. So if we've got our mirror here. But if we could look on the other side, if we extend those rays back behind the mirror, they do seem to uh, come together. I can't think of a better word. They, oh, they yeah, they 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 hit each other back behind it, and so this is an image. It's not really, really there because the no light actually forms it. It's a kind of a trick from our eyes. We call it a virtual image, um, and they're only visible to things with lenses. We're going to distinguish that in our next lab with real images that can be projected onto a screen, and they're, it's actually light interacting with that screen at that point. This isn't really light for interacting with anything except the retina at the back of our eye. Yep.